Stephen Holt. So um, there's a particular resonance or irony to, to that. So over to you, Eric. Eric on the back of the road. Um, one of the other funny ironies about uh, coming, asking to be, uh, being asked to be uh, speaking at an architecture uh, event is, um, actually I'm from New York and I went to Cooper Union uh, back in the late 80s and um, was actually kicked out after two years and uh, uh, sort of set off this whole chain of events. I moved to San Francisco and did a bunch of digital design work. And, um, I think that one of the main reasons was because I was really uh, always had a difficult time making that like, grand sculptural architectural gesture that architecture is supposed to make. I was always kind of much more interested in kind of doing those flows of data and sort of trying to make things that would breathe and flow in it. So uh, I feel totally vindicated <laughs> being asked to speak here. So thank you. Um, uh, let's see. So I'm from Stingen. I don't know. I don't think I have too much time, so I'm going to go through this quickly. And everything's cropped. So. Uh, I've got less to show in less time, but um, uh, the, um, uh, so we're from, I'm from Stangman. Um, I'm joined here by Ben Servany, who I've been working with for uh, the last uh, couple of years now as our advisor. Um, a good part of the, if I ever sort of getting uh, sort of slip into theoretical uh, discussion, it's been its uh, fault. Uh, we are a collaborative team. There's six of us. Um, we're designers and programmers. And the thing I want to talk about is something that I've been talking about with them for, for uh, some time now, which is this notion that um, Data visualization is this, is this medium that we're, we're working in. We're not thinking about it as a technology or a, as a methodology or anything like that. It's more like it's a medium. It's like architecture. It's like graphic design. It's, it's, I'm not sure if it's a separate one. There's a lot of things about it that I'm not sure about. But one of the things that we know is that the way that we treat our work is that we're working in a medium, not so much uh, in a technology. And um, and also something that uh, we're talking about with Ben is this notion that. Um, that as uh, general media literacy uh, is, is rising, that people are becoming more literate, that, um, that people are becoming more literate about data visualization uh, more specifically, and um, that the process that we're seeing now is the development of uh, essentially connoisseurs of data visualization, people who are able to sort of understand it in a different way. So uh, I'm gonna try and get to this, um, to the new project that we're working on, but, but one of the things that I'm kind of grappling with at the moment is kind of what is the shape of that medium? How do we talk about it? Does it have conventions that are different from the standard kind of custody charts and stuff? But does, it, does it have another, uh, are there other conventions that we can identify and talk about, like say with a film or, or any other medium? So I want to just talk about a few little projects and again things to come up. And probably this is not our work. Uh, this is Greg's history, I believe. No, uh, anyway, I don't have my notes here. So it's, uh, it was done at the uh, University of Michigan. This is during the last election, uh, red and blue states. Um, so you look at it this way, and you get the sense of uh, you know, that, that uh, the country is dominated by the reds. If you take it, you break it up by counties. You get this much more uh, variety, uh, very good picture. Um, if you break those counties down further, not by straight red or blue, but by the uh, degree to which they're red and blue, you get still more um, variegated picture. And then if you take these uh, counties and you size them according to how many people live in them, you get something that looks a bit more like that. You don't have to sort of just remove that as a big blue thing on the side. Uh, but so this is so so this is this is uh, you know one example of this kind of visualization work that's being done. That's being done. That's um, kind of casting a different light on the problems that we might have. Um, so it's, and a lot of this work is being done in mapping. Um, there's a sort of medium aspect of this, which is the, the sort of more analytical part of it, the solving the problems. Um, this is um, uh, a different sort of approach to the problem. Um, this is from index.blogspot.com, which is just an awesome. Uh, she does these just continuously, and she's got all kinds of charts and visualizations. And I thought this one was the, 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 all of these things, striptease, limbo, and polka, are all dances involving poles. And it's just this amazing. And she does a lot of that kind of stuff. And then, the sort of canonical, uh, I wish you could see it. Um, this is the percentage of the chart which is under Pac Man, and this is the percentage of the chart which is not run under Pac Man. So uh, it's, it's a medium, right? I mean, there's jokes you can tell with it, there's conventions, there's, it's, it's kind of developing. So it's this medium that we're working inside, and so I'm just going to quickly go through a couple of, uh, of, of the characteristics of it and then show some projects that have happened over time, and then uh, show a uh, project that we launched on Tuesday, which I think is starting to approach some of the conventions. Um, Mostly the work that Sam does is with live data. We tend to not really work with static data sets that we sort of understand ahead of time and then we try and put a visualization on it to, um, uh, to try and convince somebody of something that can make a specific point. We work with flows of data that are continuously being updated or generated. Uh, that's most of the time. Uh, a lot of times those data sets are vast and a lot of times they're also quite deep. Uh, and ideally they're all three. Um, 
So again, as I mentioned, there's a lot of stuff that we're not sure about, but I'm, uh, and we're still working on it. I'm, I'm not too worried about that at the moment. I feel like I'm not really quite sure where this is all going, but it's a, a share of uh, with, uh, our previous potential that um, we have a pretty optimistic approach to our work. So I want to talk about Mapper really quickly. Um, Mapper is uh, uh, one of our first mapping projects. Um, there's a bit of a backstory to it, but I'll, I'll just say that we have um, we developed uh, some applications for MoveOn.org to do some live mapping. And uh, uh, what we did after that was to take a look around for another data set that we could start to do mappings on. And we took a look at the um, at the photo, sorry, at the tags, uh, popular tags page on Twitter. Um, and they're all, you know, by now totally iconically sized. There's more of them. If you take a look at them, uh, at the ones that are uh, location based, it's about 40% of the tags that are in Twitter. So there's a sort of rich data set that's not intentionally being mapped. I mean, at this point, there's a, they've got a mapping application that, um, that where about 1% of the photos on Twitter are mapped. What we tried to do with this was to do something that was a much broader uh, sort of experiment and um, be able to kind of extract meaning from this data set and take this kind of full song that it was coming up with. It. Apply this taxonomy to it, and what you do, what you get when you do that, is uh, I can see most of the United States. Um, uh, I see all the United States, but these are photos that are tagged with sunset and with uh, some kind of location data. So you can see a city name, or state name, or something like that. Um, this is uh, a guy who's been driving around in this green uh, Mazda Miata to all the state capitals of the United States, and so he's like using this project to, to, to map. But actually, I, I should, it's not quite right. This project mapped his um, photos for him by doing this analysis of the tags and then assigning the location to it. So um, the kind of real example of this is the thing that the us that it was a good idea was this is a photo of, uh, this is a map of photos tagged with Route 66. So all they are is they're tagged with Route 66, the name of the city and the name of the state that they're in. There are some outliers, like this one over here, you know, this is tagged with Route 66 in Alabama and then it doesn't go through. So, you know, there's, there's weird things that happen because some of them are just placed in the middle of the state because they're just tagged with New Mexico. But you do get this kind of nice, like, um, Kind of, it's almost as though there's this information visualization project that everybody's working on, but they don't they don't know it, and they don't know about each other necessarily. So as you get in pretty close, you get um, it gets pretty detailed. Um, so this was sort of really exciting to us to notion that um, there were these data sets that were coming online, uh, Flickr being the sort of canonical one that was easily accessible and traversable to machine code, and we could start to then uh, discover things about it by using these visualization methods that um, that it hadn't been intended for. So. Uh, that led us to a couple other mapping projects, and then we were contacted by the Exploratorium in San Francisco to do a, uh, a map um, of the taxi cab uh, for a project based on the taxi routes in San Francisco. And so there's a company called Yellow Cab in San Francisco that uh, uses GPS as its uh, tracking system for uh, putting out calls and things. And so what we've done then is that we're essentially consuming that feed. The, um, I feel like I should just turn this around so you can see what it Anyhow. That's San Francisco. Um, the white traces here are um, the last four hours of taxi cab activity, and then these uh, yellow ones are uh, live taxis that are moving around. So this is a full one. This one with the, the, the dock inside is a full one, and then this is how long that driver's been um, uh, driving uh, with someone uh, with a passenger inside, and this is an empty cab uh, that's probably going down to the airport. Um, so, uh, and this, this is being refreshed continuously, so you can go there and you can see if you go to Casablanca or where the taxi are and changes during the day. So, um, you know, the, the most obvious thing um, uh, that you do with that kind of data, once you have it aside from that, is then you can animate it over time. So these are, the yellow ones are full and the, um, the, the, the red ones are empty. So, and then they're sort of, they're sort of showing drop-offs and, and pickups and things like that. So then, the second most obvious thing that you can do is, uh, I don't know if you can see it that well, but um, it is uh, uh, the faster a cab is going, the uh, the more red it's happens. So um, for those of you in San Francisco, this is downtown, so there's a whole lot of activity here that's uh, very dense but quite slow. And then down around here, you've got um, uh, things that are moving really quickly uh, down to the airport. So and the fourth most obvious thing is that over time. So this is a view um, of about four hours of taxi activity, but the slower they are, the wider they are, and the faster they are, the better they are. So you start to be able to pick out, this is from 6 in the morning until 10 in the morning, so there's still people early, but the cabs are sort of moving in, and then as the, the time goes by, it becomes a bit denser, and there's this sort of capillary action that starts to happen, and just, we got pretty excited about seeing this, because it was this, um, uh, the first thing that, that we'd seen anyway, that was based on real data, that um, really made it clear to us that the city had the same kind of mechanisms in it that, say, a heart would, depending on how you visualize it. We've got a couple other ones, um, and, uh, uh, 
more like uh, a crystallization of salt uh, or of uh,